Story time about how I kidnapped my boyfriend out of jealousy. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. I met my boyfriend while we were both in school. The thing was that he had a girlfriend, so I was pretty much the other woman. He broke up with her two weeks after meeting me, and we began dating. I know, this was the first red flag. He promised me the world and told me that he would marry me right away. Well, it's been two years since that happened, and he still hasn't popped the question. I trusted this man blindly. Two weeks ago, he started acting really strange. He started saying that I never understood him in the relationship, and that he was probably going to need some space from me. And I recognize this because this was the same thing he told his ex when he met me. I tried to play it cool and not overreact. We didn't see each other for two days. On the second day, I get a phone call from his mother. That's when his mother goes on a rant about how unhappy he is in our relationship. And then she decided to reproach me and tell me that I've been holding him back from his career. Which is not true. It's like she was just making things up as she went. Out of nowhere, she says that he doesn't want to see me anymore. That he couldn't do it to my face because he was just too afraid to break my heart. I called Bull. I told her that he broke up with his ex because of me. And that he was probably seeing another girl. She denied everything, of course. And she said the relationship hadn't been working for a long time. I told her that I wanted him to at least call me. That's when she said that he went on a two-month trip. And that he wouldn't be able to call me because he was overseas the next day she brought a box of all my stuff from his house part two is up part two of how i kidnapped my boyfriend out of jealousy disclaimer is not my story time i sent him on instagram after his mother called me to break up with me she came over to my house the next day with all my stuff i begged her to tell me where he was traveling and she wouldn't tell me she told me not to call him ever again i had known this woman for two years and she had never treated me this way i was so hurt that i started to cry in front of her that's when she hugged me and told me that this is the way that things had to be then she let it slip that he was just at his brother's house which was an hour away she apologized for how she treated me and that she had to break up with me on the phone instead of him when she left i got straight into my car and went to look for my boyfriend. When I got there, I rang the doorbell and guess who opens? My lying boyfriend. Then he says, and I quote, didn't my mom call you to tell you that I didn't want to be with you anymore? That's when I said that she did. I called him a coward for not being able to break up with me to my face. Then he whispered, I'm sorry. I asked him if he could get in the car with me and if we could just talk. He agreed and we decided to drive back to my place to talk. And that's when the idea popped into my head. I was simply going to lock him inside my house until we got back together. When we got in, I locked all the doors and windows and I hid the keys part three. Part 3 of how I kidnapped my boyfriend out of jealousy. Disclaimer is not my story time I sent him on Instagram. After he got into the house, I locked all the doors and windows. I asked him why he was breaking up with me again, and he said that he just wanted some space. That's when I told him that there had to be another woman for him to break up with me. He got really nervous and started getting all red. He denied it, but after 5 minutes, he finally confessed. He said he met someone at work and that he wanted to give her a chance, and that he never meant to hurt me, blah blah blah. After about 2 hours of arguing and fighting, he tried leaving. That's when I told him that I wouldn't let him leave until we got back together. I ran out through the back and locked him in. I left him there for three hours. When I came back, he had smashed my TV. I told him that he'd never be able to get rid of me, and we ended up getting back together. I kind of feel bad now, but I don't want to give him the freedom to be with someone else. I know this sounds crazy, but I'm right. What should I do? Background. My three cousins, males, nearly adults at the time, had a phase where they wanted to be famous pranksters. They thought they would achieve stardom by posting some nasty, mean-spirited videos. I didn't find out about this until later. But several of their pranks targeted my then-girlfriend, now-wife, Esther. One of which was swapping out my wife's bacon bits with actual bacon, then secretly recording her as she ate salad with the real bacon bits. Esther doesn't eat pork for religious reasons. Their sister, another victim, leaked the video to us. Our reaction to the video was so visceral, we seriously considered pressing charges on my underage cousins. In the end, we didn't, but we cut off contact with my three cousins and their mother, my dad's sister, who acted like it was no big deal. The cousins never apologized for what they did. A few years later, Esther and I were getting married. We sent out invitations around October 2019. Middle cousin made a post on Facebook, calling me out for excluding his family and asking where their invite was. Then he called my wife and me a pair of idiots for disinviting them because he's gay. That is how I found out he came out. I had no idea beforehand. Good for him, but that doesn't excuse him for what he and his brothers did. Most of his followers who responded agreed with him and demanded that we invite his family. I felt like I had no choice at the time. I wrote a comment saying something on the lines of, The reason why you, cousin one and two, and aunt weren't invited was that you hurt my wife-to-be with your immature prank videos and tricked her into eating something her faith bans. Their sister backed me up and shared the video. According to a post Middle Cousin later made, he got fired from his volunteer job at a kid's helpline and had another job offer pulled because the higher-up saw the video. Something similar also happened to his brothers. Their sister confirmed it. As far as I know, they're unemployed and living with their mom. I don't know which part annoys me more, my cousins hurting my wife or lying about it to cover their own tracks at our expense.
Most of my family backs Esther and me, but I don't trust their judgment because they have their own reasons to be mad at my aunt and her family. Those guys are in their 20s now and act like the videos were no big deal while blaming Esther and me and their sister for ruining their lives. Their mom is no help either. Am I the idiot for setting the record straight and telling everyone the real reason why my cousins weren't invited to my wedding? Not the idiot. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. The fact that they never apologized and then took to social media to bully you and call you names about not being invited to your wedding shows that these are exactly the kind of people that you do not want at your wedding or in your life. As for them losing jobs over their mean-spirited pranks, if they had simply called you and apologized for their horrible pranks and had a conversation with you and Esther about the wedding, instead of airing everything on social media, none of this would have happened. Kids do stupid and cruel things, but as most of us get older, we have the decency to feel ashamed of those things. When you've deeply disrespected someone's religious tradition, you have no right to be invited to their wedding. And if you don't correct that behavior in your kids, you don't have the right either. I think it's also telling that the sister is on your side. Disagree here. They were nearly adults, not little kids. You know better than to mess with someone's food at such age. What they did was cruel and plain mean, not just some stupid prank. A stupid prank would be wetting someone with a water gun. What if OP's wife avoided pork for health reasons and eating pork could have endangered her health? As for a judgment, not the idiot OP. You don't need your mean cousins and their enabling mom in your life. Not the idiot. They reaped what they'd sown. Also, I'm disgusted with people who baselessly use the X card as a shield or as a weapon of attack, when in reality, it's that they're just horrible human beings that people have issues with, not because they're X. No, I don't care that you're gay. You're just an idiot. I suspect the cousin who tried to pull the X card on OP has tried to do so with those who fired him, only to be rebutted with evidence of being a poor person. You are not the idiot, OP. As soon as your relatives pushed the issue into a public scene, you had every right to defend yourself on the same scene, a textbook example of foolishness earning expected rewards. Their own actions came to bite them in the butt, as they publicly called your morals into question when they knew they had caused the issue. What you did was the best solution to protect yourself. I am a senior editor at a publishing house. The first piece of advice I got on being hired was not to tell people I work in publishing because they'll ask me to look at their manuscripts. I thought this was a joke, but the first time I told someone I was publishing, you get one guess what they said. My mother sees this as a bonus and wants to brag to everyone and their dog about my daughter, the publisher, and my daughter who could find the next J.K. Rowling, and my daughter who can part the Red Sea with only a green pen. She finishes her boasting by giving them my contact information. I've asked her to stop it once. I've asked her to stop it a thousand times, and yet I'm still getting contacted by the nephew of my mother's butcher or my cousin's girlfriend's cousin, saying mom gave them my information so they could show me their work. I then tell them to get lost. I even have a template that I send back to most of them, saying that there is a process in place for a reason and an outline of this process. If they get pushy, which they always do, I respond that the reason the process exists is so people like them don't waste my time, as I could be using this time to find a manuscript actually worth publishing, which theirs clearly isn't. If it was, they could go through the regular channels like everyone else, rather than contact me directly and request special treatment. In conclusion, I am not kind to these people. The consequence of this is that I am gradually ostracizing my mother from her social circles, as people have begun to blame her for me reaming out their acquaintance. Mom has asked that I be nicer. I've asked her to stop putting me in this position. Mom claims that she stopped giving my info to people, and these are just the stragglers, but they just keep coming. So I'm not fully convinced that she stopped giving out my information. I told mom that if they get pushy after receiving the template, I reserve the right to give them everything I've got. Still, mom has said that I'm being really unfair, both to her and the aspiring authors, and that I'm ruining her reputation, so I need to stop being so rude. I said I will deal with them however I feel appropriate, which wouldn't happen if she didn't give my info out. She says she's learned her lesson, so I need to stop. I said I'll stop when people stop using her as a reference. She says that I'm enjoying humiliating and upsetting both these people and her and that the next time she hears from me, she's expecting an apology. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. 
You are under no obligation to be polite to pushy idiots that contact you after your mother hasn't properly given them your info. Mom's reputation is ruined because she can't resist playing the big shot, Nell's big publishing exec. Her misery stops as soon as she quits giving away your info. Stragglers? Gee, maybe she shouldn't have been so free about giving away your name. And if they're that late, I can't see how it would be enough of a connection to her. Yeah, mom is building her reputation on a house of cards, or whatever that phrase is. She's built and increased her reputation just on the back of her daughter's profession. It's now all coming crashing down, and mom wants daughter, who she's already made life difficult for, to pick up the pieces. My mom won't even give my phone number slash email to people that she knows I know. Not the idiot. Tell anyone who contacts you with your mother's credentials, it will cost them X amount of dollars, however much you want to charge, for you to look at their manuscripts. It's your job, so you should be paid for it. Just make sure to charge a large enough sum that you scare off the people who aren't serious. Everyone's the idiot here. I also work in publishing. They are idiots. Your mother is an idiot, but you're being unprofessional and you will get a reputation. Send the template and then delete any future emails. Mark them as spam if you have to. I couldn't believe how many people justify this behavior. Yes, it sucks, but there's a polite way to say no. Treating people like this is just very unprofessional. Not the idiot. My husband is a computer nerd, not a professional IT person. And yet, the amount of times family used to bring up his name when Sally's baby's brother's girlfriend's grandmother's great niece on her late husband's side of the family needed help fixing her virus-laden laptop for free. We both got better at saying no. Everything I've heard about the publishing world is very cutthroat and high energy. LP does not need to waste her precious time dealing with these fools. Years ago, my ex-husband and I adopted a cat. I absolutely adored her and we were best friends. She slept in our bed every night until she died. My ex is a gifted painter and can support himself with his art. After the death of our beloved cat, he painted her in her favorite spot and gifted it to me. It now hangs in my lounge room. Obviously, my ex and I are divorced now. I have since moved on and am in a relationship with my partner. He quickly stated that he wasn't comfortable with me having paintings that my ex made. I agreed to take them down, but told him the cat painting stays where it is. He reluctantly agreed. All was well until yesterday, when my partner accidentally broke the frame. My ex used to write loving messages on the back of all the paintings he gifted me, and the cat was no exception. I never really thought about it anymore because I don't see it. But well, my partner saw it and freaked out. He demanded that I get rid of it as it's disrespectful to him. He said I might as well hang up a photo of my ex in the lounge room. I really want to keep the painting. It brings me so much joy to see my darling every day. I don't have a photo of her in her favorite spot and the painting really captures her beautiful soul. My partner says I'm an idiot because I value a gift for my ex more than his comfort. I'd really like to know how you accidentally break the frame of a portrait you have previously complained about? He is definitely the idiot. If he can't handle that you loved your cat and loved the painting of the cat, but don't love the painter anymore, that's his problem, not yours. I was about to say sure he accidentally broke the frame. OP is not the idiot and should seriously consider moving on from this kind of immature, controlling behavior. Sounds like he's not just jealous of the ex-husband, but that she had the audacity to love her cat. Not the idiot. Hiding the painting is the same as pretending you were never married. It happened and it's a part of who you are, but it does not mean you're still attached to him. This painting to you seems to be about your cat. And trust me, I understand the love for a pet. Stand by this painting. Your partner is showing a glimpse of his true colors, in my opinion. I was formerly married to, let's call him Steve. And we had a daughter. We'll call her Rebecca. When Rebecca was six, Steve left me for Carrie, the mom of Rebecca's school friends, Lisa. Steve married Carrie, and now they have two kids of their own. I got remarried to Joe, who had no kids. Steve and I share custody of Rebecca, and Carrie has full custody of Lisa. So the girls live together half of the time. Rebecca, who is now 14, loves her siblings, but doesn't really like Lisa very much. They have little in common, and Rebecca says that Lisa is frequently rude to her and her friends. Joe and I both work full time and are comfortable, although not wealthy. Carrie is a stay at home mom who gets no child support from her ex. And she and Steve can afford the basics, but don't have a lot of extra money for non-essentials. 
Joe and I have been saving for a few years and now have enough money to take Rebecca to Italy, a place she has always wanted to visit. We are tentatively planning the trip for next spring. Rebecca was extremely excited to hear about the trip and mentioned it when she was at Steve's last week. Long story short, I got an email from Steve and Carrie insisting that we also take Lisa on the trip. They said that they are basically sisters and that it's not fair for Rebecca to get to go if Lisa can't. They also said flat out that they could scrape together the money for a plane ticket, but not much else. So they expect Joe and me, who are childless, to cover Lisa's hotel and incidental expenses. I asked Rebecca if she wanted Lisa to come, and she said absolutely not. I emailed Steve back and told him that I was sorry, but that I wasn't prepared to take Lisa, and that was that. Carrie sent back an email calling me cruel and selfish and saying that it wasn't Lisa's fault that her parents didn't have as much money as Joe and I. She said she had looked at pricing and it wouldn't cost us that much extra to bring Lisa along. When it became clear that I wasn't going to relent, Steve called his parents who consider Lisa one of their grandkids and they are now also pressuring me to take Lisa with us and offering to chip in some money to defray the extra cost. Given what they are prepared to contribute, Joe and I figure it would cost us between $500 and $1,000 extra to bring Lisa on the trip. To be honest, we could probably afford it, but Rebecca doesn't want her to go. And frankly, I don't see why Joe and I should be expected to take her. Am I the idiot? It might be because we could afford to take Lisa. We just don't want to. Not the idiot. She's not your daughter. She's your ex's stepdaughter. You have no obligation, moral included. Also, how dare they call you childless? when you literally share custody of Rebecca. Like the sheer audacity, if this pulse was real, LOL. Agree, this is bizarre. I also don't understand your explanation of why you might be the idiot. You think that if a person can't afford to take someone on a trip, they might be an idiot if they don't? That's weird logic. Maybe OP feels bad for Lisa because some people feel pity for kids who don't have as much. That still doesn't mean Lisa is entitled to go on the trip. You are not the idiot. From the sound of it, you don't even know Lisa. You have no relationship with her. Imagine what will happen if she gets homesick, ill, rebellious, or uncooperative on this trip. You also have no legal power over her. Transporting an unrelated teenager across international borders without a guardian along could expose you to intense scrutiny. There are many reasons not to do this. The most important is that your daughter doesn't want to. Not the idiot. Lisa is not your kid, and it's not your responsibility to provide her with a vacation. And since your kid does not want Lisa to come along, don't even entertain the idea that you are wrong in any way. It's not fair for Rebecca to go if Lisa can't. This is absolute tripe. I went to Italy several years ago. I didn't take Lisa with me either. Please apologize to these entitled idiots on my behalf for how unfair that was to her. Context. Me, 28 male, and my fiancé, female, 23, are getting married this summer. Wedding planning already started, and we're both paying for everything. No outside help. I get along with my fiancé's family, but my only issue is with her recovering alcoholic dad. The guy is basically a punk. He did it all. Stole, cheat, went to jail. He's the your mom was my girlfriend type of guy. What can I say? It's a small town. Everyone uh -huh, knows each other. My fiancé is his only daughter, and she's constantly worrying too much about him, helping him with money, helping him with his living situation, and supported him in his recovery. We remain civil for the sake of all that's holy, but disagree often. He sat me down days ago to tell me about his journey in recovery and how challenging his experience was. He said he wants no drinks at the wedding whatsoever. I was taken aback. I said that's not going to work for my family and me. He said, it's okay, we can have drinks after the wedding is over. So, after everyone has left? Absolutely not. I told him I'm sorry if he has an issue with drinks at the wedding, but it's the norm, and he shouldn't dictate the wedding just because he thinks he needs to be accommodated. He said firmly that he doesn't understand why I'm choosing to satisfy my family, who can't spend one night without drinking liquor that tastes like pee, to be my hill to die on. Funny coming from the man who gave up all he had for a drink. But let's not be so darn mean right now and weaponize his past. It's just one night, he's right. But of all nights, this is legitimately the night where drinks should be available since, you know, it's a celebration. Long story short, 
He went on about me making the whole wedding about my family and me. I flipped out, lost it, and told him he doesn't get a say. We argued till we were blue in the face, and he refused to stand down. When I shouted that I'd uninvite him, he shouted back that that's his only daughter and he should be present at her wedding. I spoke to my fiancé. She says she's torn on the issue since she's happy and proud of her dad's progress and wants him to be at her wedding, and I shouldn't have spoken to him this way. My in-laws call me an idiot to take my father-in-law's recovery lightly and refuse to do as suggested. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. So the entire world must stop drinking so he can control himself? Does he demand that the grocery store remove all the wine and beer before he shops? He isn't paying for your wedding. The wedding is about you and your fiancé. You get to decide details. It's between you and your future wife. Not the idiot, but you're missing the forest for the trees. Drinks at the reception are the trees. The forest? You got a big forest. Think about these statements and what they foreshadow for your married life. My fiancé is always worrying too much about him. Helping him with money helping him with his living situation. And your big fight with her dad? She says she's torn on this issue? And I shouldn't have spoken to him this way. You and she need to settle the issue of dad's place in your lives and how you will settle disputes that involve him in the future. Exactly. When you marry someone, you're essentially marrying their family as well. And unless you go no contact, the family will be in your life for the next 30 plus years. OP needs to talk to the fiancé and say that boundaries need to be established with the dad before the wedding happens. Am I wrong for firing my sister after seeing her blog and not rehiring her without an apology? Basically what happened is I read my sister's blog. It was sent to me by a friend of mine who was asking if one of the characters was me. Spoiler alert, it was. It's a couple of years old and really popular. She doesn't use our family's real names, but they are very similar and use the same first letters. So think real names Kathy, Julia, Marissa, and Brad, and then the fake names being Kathy, June, Marine, and Bob. It's descriptive enough of our lives and what we do for work that my friend identified me from it. It's mostly about her and her life, but there are still a lot about us. A year ago, I had an abortion. It was during the lowest point in my life so far and only she and my husband knew about it. She swore to me that she would take the secret to her grave. Yeah, she wrote a whole entry about it. A couple of months ago, she and her husband got laid off due to world events. I run my own business that wasn't really affected and I offered her a job there to help her out. She's not qualified in my field, so I essentially made up a position for her so she could have a steady paycheck. She basically does data entry and other random tasks online from her home. Her blog since then has basically centered on how much she hates it. She called it demeaning work and says a bunch of bullshit about how I obviously don't respect her intelligence. I say this is BS because one, she would need years of training to work any of the open positions. Two, I told her what she would do when I offered it and she gushed about how grateful she was that I was really helping her. I called her and told her what I had read and how hurt I was. Her defense is that the blog is her online diary where she vents and that I should know not to take any of it personally. She actually had the gall to tell me that she is hurt that I read it. <sighs> Bitch, it's fucking public. Apparently, the right thing to do was ignore it. I told her off for telling the internet my secrets and dragging me online where I could be and was found out by people who know me. She just said she did all her due diligence by changing the names and it wasn't her fault my friend found it. 
We argued for a bit, it got increasingly heated, and I fired her. I told her that if she couldn't apologize or see how she was wrong here, then she wasn't who I thought she is, and she could find a job where she felt more respected. It's been a week, and I haven't spoken to her at all. Her husband has been contacting me on her behalf, trying to get her job back as they need the money. He claims she is sorry, but I think if she was, then she could tell me herself. My own husband is telling me I am overreacting, and she's family, and I should just forget it. I don't agree.